Hello um, and welcome. I'm Ellie Witter with the Miami University Alumni Association. Thank you so much for joining us today for a special presentation, A Taste of Luxembourg with Nikki Krieger. This presentation is a part of Winter College and today is a very special day. It is Charter Day for Miami University. Uh, today is our final day of Winter College sessions. So we hope you join us tonight at 6 p.m. for our Love and Honor Awards and at 7 p.m. for a bourbon tasting with Phil Collin and Dr. Mike Crowder. You can sign up for all events at alumlc.org slash Miami OH. For those of you watching live today, you have the opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation. Just click ask a question below on your video on the webinar, on the webinar site, excuse me. So let's get ready for this session. Nikki is from Dudelange, Luxembourg and has lived all over the world, including the United States, Austria, Russia, China, and Brazil. Um, her family is a Miami family through and through. Her husband, Carlo, is a 1981 alumnus and a current member of the MUDEC Alumni Advisory Board. And her son, Louis, is a 2018 Miami graduate in chemical engineering. Carlo and Nikki also have two daughters, Claire and Lucy. And actually, all three children are with her today helping with the presentation. So thank you all. Um, today, Nikki, welcomes us into her kitchen in Luxembourg um, to prepare two Luxembourgish dishes. Um, this year we are celebrating the 55th anniversary of the Miami University John Dalavoy European Center in Luxembourg. And we are so excited to bring this taste of Luxembourg to you today. So without further ado, I will turn it over to you, Nikki. Hello, thank you very much, Ali. Hello everybody, welcome. Um, tonight, we're going to do two Lux very traditional Luxembourgish recipes. I think those of you who maybe came to Mudeck, they know it. It's a bonus schlup, which literally translated means a bean slurp, and it's the only soup you're allowed to eat with a lot of noise at home, because you go and it, it tastes really good. It's not difficult. And we usually, in our family, every family has their own recipe, every family has their own traditions. So some serve it with uh, pancakes, others serve it with uh, waffles, Belgian waffles. Or uh, we put in a sausage, a kind of like it, in the US you would say kielbasa. Uh, we call it a matwurst. And my family accompanies this dish with Grombre Kieselcher, potato pancakes. Grated potatoes with uh, onions and parsley and fried in oil and no calories at all, but it's so tasty. It's excellent winter food. So uh, what I did, oh, maybe I introduce my son Louis first. He's here, he's a... Miami grad 2018 and last week he defended his PhD thesis at the university in Luxembourg here so very proud Miami mom wife and so on. I'm very proud of my girls too but they went to different universities <laughs> so let's start cooking I don't know if people are cooking along uh, we sent out the, the ingredients list with how they should be cut up. So if you want to cook along, please feel free, ask questions, write them in the comments, and uh, Ellie will start asking the questions. I cut up everything beforehand because otherwise it would take too long to cook. I'm going to start with the soup. And while the soup is boiling and uh, slowly uh, going, we'll do the complication. So I will start here with the soup. I have a big pot where I add first a slice of butter, a good tablespoon. And I put the pot on, I put it on high heat. Right. 
So the ingredients I have is the butter first, bacon, onions, leek, celery stalks, carrots. These are the string beans. They are like this. I cut off the ends. And if there's, uh, they are called string beans, so sometimes they have a string here, you have to remove that and then cut up in, in little, maybe half an inch or an inch. And the potatoes. So the butter is melted and I add the bacon. Once the bacon is fried, uh, once the bacon is fried, I add the onions, also cut up. Yes. Do you have a question? Yes. Uh, so when you're frying the bacon, um, how how much doneness are you trying to get with it? Is not it, too much. Not it, too much? It, shouldn't, okay. it shouldn't brown. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The other Very method good. you can do is not fry the bacon at all. But you. you can use thick slices of okay. bacon. Okay. And just put them in whole and then okay. cut them up afterwards. Very but good. The, okay. The frying of the bacon gives it a little extra. A little extra taste there. Sure. Wonderful. Wonderful. So after the onions, I add the leek. And the celery. And the carrots. Now I add my beans, the potato ones.
I do not add salt in the, until the very end because uh, the bacon is salty. Later on, I'm going to add the sausages and they are salty. So I only add the salt to taste in the end. There's also going to be a um, vegetable broth and that contains uh, salt as well. So you have to be very careful with adding extra salt. Nikki, I do have a question for you. With the vegetables, um, I don't know how prominent it is in, in um, Luxembourg, but could you use like canned green beans for this or is it best to use fresh? You, yeah, you, canned green beans are cooked. Right. So you could only add them. I think you, you then could do the, the onions, the other vegetables and the potatoes. Okay. And when those are done, you could add the beans. Okay. But the taste is better with the fresh beans. No, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So I have here are the thin string beans. Mm -hmm. You also have a broader version. You have a thicker yeah. version. So it depends on the season. You can okay. use any. Okay. If you have a broader version, you cut them a little bit diagonally. It looks different. But these were the only ones I found today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. They look wonderful. Everything looks wonderful so far. Yeah. So now that everything has been just fried a little bit, if there's any questions, I'm here. Go ahead. The next I'm going to add is. Um, chicken um, vegetable broth you can also use chicken broth if you prefer that or or meat i take vegetable broth this is about one liter And then I'm going to add, this is uh, somewhat savory. I think I never found any in the US. So I brought it from here, but I think you can, you can find it nowadays. Otherwise you can maybe use some sage or thyme. That depends, but uh, many people don't put the summer savory at all because they say it belongs in a different recipe. Okay. But this is, I'm not a professional chef. This is our family recipe. No, I, I love it. I love that it's um, traditional to Luxembourg, especially the family dishes. So with the different spices, um, is it best to use dried or if you were to be able to get um, fresh yeah. sage or fresh no, it's dried. Okay, it's all dried. Fresh. Okay. Yeah. And then in, when you first started, you mentioned that this was the only soup that you could actually slurp. Do you know yes. why that why that is? Because it's the name okay. called the, the slurp, the bean slurp soup. Okay. So we, we were not allowed to slurp at home, but this one, there was no reason to say you cannot slurp. Okay. It's the name. That's wonderful. <laughs> Now you see the beans with the vegetables. I'm going to cover all the vegetables with water. It should be well covered because we're going to add potatoes in about maybe 15 minutes we're going to add potatoes to this or 10 minutes once the, the water is boiling
So I'm covering this and bring it to a boil. And then I'll, I'll add the potatoes. Nikki, with potatoes, does it matter what type of potato? Um, actually, it, if, if it was a red potato, a purple potato, a white potato, does, does that matter at all? It's a white, yellow potato, one that you would use for potato salad, one that stays firm. Okay. Very, okay. And you peel them, it looks like, right? Yeah, they are peeled and cut in the cubes. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And then these are the sausages I was talking about. Oh. Maybe I, I can cut one. It's a pork sausage. And towards the end, I just put them in the soup to boil them. And then after I put the whole sausage in the soup and that gives another little um, savory flavor to the soup. And then when they are done, I take them out, I, I slice them and they go back in the soup. Okay. That's very interesting to do it that way of, of having them in their hole first and then cutting them up. Easier. A absolutely. <laughs> So the bonus schluck is actually a soup that is now the right season to eat. It's a um, carnival this weekend where many people go out and when they come home late at night, they eat either a big a bowl of uh, onion soup, the French onion soup, or this because they can, you make it ahead. It tastes better even the second day. It's nice the first day, but when it turns cold and you heat it up the next day, it's even better, like many soups. So we're going to... Is, is anybody cooking along, by the way? Yes, it does look... I have seen a couple of questions. One said that their pot was filling up very fast with all of the, the green beans in there. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely people are, are cooking along. Um, and there's one person I was interested in the ingredient list. We'll be sure to share that ingredient list and the yes. full recipe afterwards. I will send the whole recipe afterwards. Perfect. That would so, be wonderful. Yeah, this, the amount that I made this for about um, six people. And, and we may have some leftover for tomorrow. Many people eat it as a main dish with the sausage in it and then the potato pancakes on the side. It's, it's a very, it, it's a full meal, I would say. And when you add some cream in the end, even very more. Good. Yeah. So I, I repeat the steps. You melt some butter in the pot, add the bacon, fry it a little bit, but not too much. It shouldn't be crispy. And then you add the onions, the leek, the celery, the carrots, and you stir for a while and then you add the beans. You fill up with the broth, you add the savory, and then you bring it to a boil. And when it's boiling, we're going to add the potatoes. And then it can sit until the potatoes are, and the beans are tender. And in the meantime, we can make the potato pancakes. Perfect. We call them Omfrikischelche. You have many versions of it. In Switzerland, they make the Rusty. It's almost the same, but it's thicker or it's a whole pan. 
Um, I, we like ours very crispy, fine, thin. You can make them thicker. That depends on, on your taste. But to make them thin and crispy, I, I will show you a little trick that we use for that. I you have them everywhere, I think. In, I think in the US, I heard they are called latkes. Yes, latkes in the United States. Yes. So you, we lived all over the world and everybody has a little version of it. You can make variations as well. Take half potatoes and half zucchini or zucchini and carrots, all grated very finely. There's a whole lot you can do with it. You can eat it with the soup. You can make it as a nice appetizer with a sour cream and salmon. Or, or you eat them uh, with applesauce, it's very nice too. So, plenty of things to do with those. So what you want to do first is take your bowl and add a kitchen towel. It, can, it should be an old one, but clean. <laughs> because <coughs> I put this under my uh, grate here. I'm only grating two potatoes. All the others I have here already, otherwise it takes too long. And then I'm taking my pre-grated potatoes and I add them here. Potatoes contain a lot of liquid. If you want them crispy, have them in your towel. Fold the towel up like this. And you squeeze the water out. Could you hand grate the potatoes? Or actually, that would take a lot more time. <laughs> you can hand grate them for two or three people, otherwise, it's yes. Or you don't eat that much. <laughs> Then would you be able to, would a cheesecloth also the do cheese the cheesecloth would work, yes. Okay, wonderful. And just so that you, you get as much water out. You see how much I have here. And you want to rinse your tablecloth right away or the cheesecloth <laughs> if it's a reusable one. Just rinse it because it will turn completely black.
you know, we're gonna have a look at the soup. So it's boiling, there's no, sometimes you have a little bit of foam on top, but uh, there's nothing here, so we can just go on. Potatoes. Stir it as well. You can add more potatoes if you want, or the other vegetables. It's a bean soup, so that should be the majority of vegetables in there. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands and I will do this next step by hand. Are there any questions? Is everybody coming, keeping up? Yes, they definitely are going, are keeping up. It's been wonderful to, to see it come together. Uh, yeah, I do have a question. Uh, I believe when we, we spoke prior to this presentation, um, you said that the, the potato pancake is, is like a street food. Is that something that you would, is that something like that? more like a festival type of thing, but also like, what, what do you know the origins of, of that? Yeah, it's like, very popular as a street food. If you go to the Shoba Foa, the Shoba Mess, they make them ahead and they fry them in, in oil when you order them. Okay. They are usually thicker, but it's very popular street food. Okay. Very popular. Wonderful. So no, it's the soup will be quite lovely. Um, here in Oxford, it actually has, um, our temperature went from almost 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 20 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. So yeah. <laughs> it, 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 this is be a, it's gonna be a lovely meal to have today. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now I have my potatoes grated. I will add a cubed onions. This is one onion for about, I don't know, what did we have? Three pounds of potatoes, I think. And then I add fresh parsley, which I don't know how you cut it, but I cut it with my scissors like this. Have some ready though. Well. Then I add salt. This is about one teaspoon of salt. You have to taste the first one, the first pancake, and then add more or not. So you need at least two or three people in the kitchen to help you uh, taste, find out if there's enough salt. And then here I have two eggs. Just beat them lightly. Top. And about two tablespoons of flour. This is to keep the potatoes together with the eggs. 
and then you just mix them. You mix everything very well. Is it best to mix it by hand or you, would a spoon be all right too? I think your spoon would, would be all right, even the food processor, not on very, very low speed. Mm. Otherwise, absolutely, it becomes mushy. That makes a lot of sense. But definitely in the kitchen, your hands are your best tools. Yes, definitely. <laughs> If the mixture is a little bit too wet or too dry, should you add more eggs or add more flour? No, you shouldn't add anything. The, there will be more liquid coming out and it will be in the bottom of the bowl. Okay. You just leave it. You don't need to throw it out. Okay. But while you, while you fry them, there will be liquid sitting in the bowl in the bottom, yes. Okay. So for the complication chart, put the bowl here and I use, this is sunflower oil, you can use canola oil or maybe peanut oil. All, no, I wouldn't use olive oil because it's too um, strong, the paste is too strong. So take a, a neutral pasting one and you feel You put your, your pan on very high heat and you fill it with the oil. You fill the bottom with oil. And it has to be really, really, really hot. So while it's heating up, you can prepare a plate with some paper towel, kitchen towel, to soak up the, the oil, the excess oil, when they are done. If you want to check if your oil is warm enough, you can take a wooden spoon and you hold, you hold it in the oil. And if there's little bubbles forming around, then it's warm enough. So this is not, this is not warm enough yet. Because if it's not hot enough and you put the potatoes in, it will soak up all the oil and it will not fry until afterward. So you will have even more oil in the Would you ever consider frying them in butter or or in the bacon grease? Uh, would that be an option or is that too strong of a flavor? No, butter I, I wouldn't use because the butter, when you heat it very high, it will turn brown as well. And I think it, it's better to use oil. You can put the heat higher on that. That definitely makes sense. 
So we do have a couple of questions from Luxembourg. Um, I know when we have spoken, you've lived all over the world, um, but what are some of your favorite things about Luxembourg? My favorite things about here is being close to the family. Absolutely. Being close to friends again. And you know, for all these things, let me just check on the oil, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Here, you see how the bubbles are forming a lot here. So we can have our first It's also nice, the things I'm used to cook, I can find the ingredients here easily. We lived in places where I didn't speak the language before we went there. I couldn't read the signs in the streets like Russia or China. So it makes life easier. Absolutely. Uh, so for those that don't know as much about Luxembourg, um, it is centered in the, the heart of Europe. And so um, Germany and France and Belgium are all borders. So, um, and due to Lange, uh, if I remember correctly, you're only a, a couple miles from France, correct? Yes, if I go up in the attic and I look out the window, I can see France. No kidding. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's very close. You can in one day in four countries. You can go Luxembourg, Belgium, Germany, France, and you're not even exhausted. And then with the um, MUDEC, the um, John Dolloboy European Center for Miami in Luxembourg, um, how far is Dudelange from Differdange, where the campus is? It's about 20 kilometers, I would say. Okay. Maybe 30, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, 25 minutes by car. That's very convenient for sure. <laughs> and there are the comments that came in um, that says that they're so happy that you are able to be close to your family again. It's very nice to be close. And all the children are here. And the nephews and nieces. So I see that you like to, it gets very crispy, especially on the edges. The first one here is actually a little bit crispy already. But uh, I will add now the sausages to the soup. Just put the entire sausages in. So you want both sides of the pancake to be the similar uh, crispiness or doneness? Yes, similar, similar. Golden brown, a little bit more on the brown side. Will be good. <coughs> you can work with two pans as well because it will take a while. If you have more, more guests, it's faster. <coughs> you can put them also on a plate or in a bowl and keep them in the in the oven to keep them warm. I was going to ask that. Is this something that you would eat cold, or is it all you really only want to eat it warm? No, warm, warm is better.
There's a question that came in of regarding the salt. I know you had said to make sure that you taste the first one and if it's salty enough or not salty enough. But if there is an opportunity, like, would you uh, put salt on them afterwards at all or only in the batter? Oh, you would add it in the batter afterwards. Okay. And you would mix it up again. So you can just taste it for the first one's always the taster. And then you can put more salt in the butter. Wonderful. I know that Nikki just had to step out for just a second. Um, she was having she had a little bit of a cold um but um i don't know which one has the camera at the moment um if it, it's claire or lucy yes. or, or louis claire. um but what has your experience been with being a part of miami university in different ways or through your brother and through your your father um having such strong connections i know you both didn't go to to miami but what has your experience been with just interacting with everyone well, we came for the graduation, for my brother's graduation. And I just remember it being really friendly and really big. And I didn't, I actually went to university in England, so it's a completely different experience. Absolutely. So very interesting to see that. Definitely. Which then Lu Yin. Yeah. Yes, and yeah, yes. Lu Yin, you, you, you were just finishing, um, you finished your thesis, but um, when you were a student, um, what were some of the things you were involved with on campus? I was involved with uh, a lot of things. So I played intramurals ice hockey uh, while I was there um, the whole time. I was involved uh, with the um, SCA, Society for Creative Anachronism, uh, which is the bit of the medieval uh, club there. Yes. Um, uh, the board game group, I was a part of the AFIO as well, which is a service fraternity uh, that was there. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I was involved, and then uh, uh, I was also a TA uh, for a bit. Wonderful. That's such a wonderful experience. Uh, I know you said ice hockey, but did you ever do the famous broom ball for Miami? I did uh, one semester, yes. <laughs> yeah. I took part in it once, yes. Very, very good. Um, have you been back to Oxford since you graduated? I was actually back in August uh, just for a, a day. Um, wonderful. Passing through to go to a friend's wedding that I met at Miami. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so I was back there for a day, got to see all the new interiors and everything that's changed in the last four years. Definitely. No, that's exciting. And congratulations again on your thesis. Um, that, that's absolutely incredible. I know um, I actually had the honor of meeting the, the whole family when I was in Luxembourg um, a few months ago, and we spoke quite a bit about your um, thesis and what, what you were doing. So congratulations again on definitely making all of us Miamians proud. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I'll leave it back to the cook, the important one. Wonderful. Here. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to step out. Not a problem at all. Yeah, so here is the first batch. I will get, give them to my testers here. See if we need to add more salt. We And we're going to, to bake the rest uh, afterwards. Great. We need to add more salt. Okay. So we have to test again. <laughs> yeah, the salt goes in the batter. You can always also put more salt when they are done. You just sprinkle like twice. But it's better if it's uh, in the batter. So now I'm taking out one of my sausages, see if they are <clears throat> done. Okay. 
I think if you put the, the Polish Yadasa, they are pre-cooked, so you only need to heat them. These here, the matros, they are raw, so you have to, to uh, fully cook them. Okay. Done. So the, the matros, they are soft when you put them in, but when they are boiled, they are harder. <coughs> Yeah, and you just slice them like this and put them back in the soup. And we can, yeah. So we'll put the sausage here. <coughs> the soup, it depends, it's a question of taste also. I'm gonna add some cream. Just a heavy cream into the soup. You also have other recipes where they thicken, they, they put the starch in the flour mm. to put like the fish on that sauce. I think the, the cream is enough. You, you just mentioned if you had it as more of a thicker soup and you said the bechamel sauce, would you do a, a roux? And then that, yeah. or cornstarch? You, you would do roux and add some water from the soup, the liquid from the soup, and then add that in the pot, okay. and, and it makes it thicker. But I think the cream is enough. <clears throat> it looks wonderful. It looks so delicious. I wish yeah. I was there able to, able to have a, a, a cup of that right now. <laughs> You will serve it. You can add some applesauce with the competition, but it's not necessary with the soup. Both look absolutely delicious. Thank you. Uh, yeah, before you serve it, of course, you try if you need to add some salt, but really go very slowly with the salt. You, you have all that. The bacon, the sausage, the broth, you really do not need a lot after that. And you, you cannot easily take it out. It's easier, easier to add more at the table. Absolutely. To your taste. No, this has been absolutely wonderful. Um, let, me, let me just double check, make sure if, if any other questions have come in. Yes. Um, <laughs> There was a question that came in prior to it, and I know we we just um, we spoke about it just a little bit ago. Uh, but do you have a good zucchini bread recipe? I do, I do. But I heard the question asked if there was coconut in it. Yeah, <laughs> I have a very good zucchini bread recipe. There's no coconut, but I guess you can add coconut if you wish. But the recipe is not from Luxembourg, it's from my neighbor in Washington DC when we used to live there. So it's it's an American recipe, but I make it quite often. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and, nice. and to the point what you had said about the potatoes, you could mix in um, zucchini with the potato for the, the little pancake. You could do yes. some other options that way. So you have a lot of- yeah, or, or sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. I think you can, Add that too, or the purple potatoes make it more colorful. Wonderful. But, uh, you can also make it zucchini and carrots only, but you need to add a little bit of flour, I guess, to uh, definitely uh, to make it stick together. Otherwise, it, it will fall apart. Absolutely. Well, this has been wonderful, um, and I know you have a lot more of those pancakes to make um, afterwards. <laughs> But uh, I think for right now, unless you have any other tips on this, I think we have our, our dish made. Yeah, well, if there's uh, other questions or people can um, write to me, you can uh, follow me on Instagram. My account is uh, 
maybe we can write it Nikki in the kitchen. Yes, we can absolutely share that afterwards. Yeah. And I highly recommend anybody to yeah. to follow I, I only wonderful make pieces. things I make myself. I do not post anything from restaurants. It's, it's only things I make myself. I don't put the recipes, but if you write to me, I'm happy to share if possible. <laughs> Wonderful. And yes, everyone who is watching, um, we will be sure to share the recipe list as well as the, the full instructions um, after. Yeah. The, the recipe list is actually in the, the or the, the ingredient list is in the listing of this webinar. So you can mm -hmm. certainly see it there, but then we will share again all of the details um, for both of these. I'll okay. send you the recipe tonight. Perfect. No, that's wonderful. Um, so thank you again. And thank you all to everyone who has been watching. Um, this is a recorded presentation, so you'll be able to view it later today um, or another day to be able to be able to cook this. Um, and so thank you all for joining us for Winter College again tonight at 6 p.m. We have our Love and Honor Awards and at 7 p.m. a bourbon bourbon tasting. And both of those can be found on alumlc.org slash Miami OH. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining us um, and love and honor. And thank you for my presence. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for, for being with us today and joining us from Luxembourg. And a good and appetite to everybody. <laughs>